Hey there everybody, Kopika here. Welcome back to more Reverse Rebirth. In the last episode, we managed to go ahead and complete the last two floors on the first floor, and now we are starting with the new floor of the second floor. And now on the second floor, we have Olympus, Atlantica, Halloween Town, and Wonderland. And I'm going to say this now, you want to do Wonderland... And you also want to try to take um, take out Atlantica. Now, for whatever reason, and I don't know why, I fought Oogie Boogie in this run. And I had the most terrible luck with the dice, mainly because it was very RNG or not. I don't really know. Maybe it was just me just sucking, but the fight wasn't going as I wanted it to. It kind of went in a way that made me realize that, wow, my RNG luck sucks. And you know what? That's okay. That's fine, I guess. But I, I kind of don't like the fact that I couldn't be able to beat him quickly. But anyways, Oogie Boogie is the same exact dude. What you're essentially going to do is go ahead and um, counter his cards with his and try to go ahead and get the Mickey card. I couldn't get the Mickey card, the game wasn't having it, so I essentially had to do the fight normally, which was great, because, hey, I mean, look at it this way, I'm showcasing what the fight is like normally if I was doing Sora's story, and I forgot how much I actually don't like it, I don't like how this fight is, considering the fact that it's two things, one, you kind of have to break his cars three times for the gate to come down. Two, you have to legitimately hit him because he sometimes will counterattack with cards because he doesn't get stunned, obviously, if you don't have the gimmick card. And three, if you're kind of doing a bunch of stuff and you take, if you take too long to attack him, he will end up pushing you out of the way. And it's really annoying. Like, I don't like this fight. This is not one of my favorite fights, but this is not... This is not the only fight that's annoying. The other fight in Wonderland, however, is uh, more, even more annoying for all the wrong reasons. And funny enough, you kind of don't want to go in dark mode for that fight. So see, look at this. He's, he's obviously doing the cards and I'm like, wow, none of them is giving me the Mickey card. All right. I guess the game just really don't want me to win, so I had to fight him normally. I was going to use Overpowered, but then I was like, okay, that's not going to really work. And then something else kind of happens, but that this is on me. This is not the game's fault. You kind of also don't want to quickly break him as well, because the um, issue is, is that the gate actually won't take the damage if you break him early. You kind of want to wait for him to throw the dice and then break him. And then you kind of go ahead and start wailing on him until he dies. And, uh, like I said, it it's a weird... Like, this was by far not one of my best runs of this fight. Which sucks, but hey, what are you going to do? Sometimes that happens. And then he's, like, almost dead, and then he, like, ah, he pushes you. And I'm like, huh, why must you drag this fight on? And I was like, yeah, you know what, stop. And I turn into my dark mode, and now I got Dark Faraga. And, and, and then this starts to happen. Like, I could have just ended it by just slapping him in the face. But no, I decided to be all fancy with it and try to use Dark Faraga. So, this kind of happens. Because, I don't know. Riku, why do you go back? And then I was like, okay, you know what? Forget it. I, it's like, I don't know why Riku goes back for. It's like, ah, I'm gonna, it's like, ah, I'm gonna go back because it's cooler. And I'm like, Riku, stop. Just, just, just shoot the fire like a normal person. Why are you building up some friggin' dark aura nonsense just to shoot out of your hands? Like, just hit him. <laughs> All these over-the-top moves, for what reason, I have no idea. And I'm like, wow, Dark Faraga is stupid. Like, I hate all the built-up moves in this game, because it's like, ah, uh, 
you got like raging storm which is Sora like putting the keyblade and then creating tornadoes and it's like oh, I gotta I gotta spin my keyblade and and then boom there it go flames coming at me and it's like I, I then you got mega flare which mind you in birth by sleep you guys seen what mega Philly looks like it's just fire boom and then for some reason in reach of memory is fire oh look at me i'm spinning my keyblade creating flames kabo kabo ski and i'm like just shoot the fireball please if you're gonna do some fancy kick-ass animation can it be something else that's not like this this is wasting my time like, by the time you finish doing the whole, look at me, I can spin my keyblade around. The freaking enemy just uses a zero card and break you, and you're like, Well, I should have taken that long to use my Kamehameha Blast. Like, seriously, stop it. <laughs> it's like the most dumbest thing, too, and it's one of the things I never understand. These play enemies are obnoxious as hell. I don't like them. Then again... <sighs> We're going to be playing Cage 2 after this is done, but I will be taking um, a large break because I am I'm getting kingdom burnt out hearts and it's not really great. Also, if you don't have Mickey, obviously you can use Mickey as I mean, you can use Oogie as your means of recovery. I don't like using Oogie as my means of recovery because A, he only heals you 10 times. And his regain is fine, it's just that it also takes a bit for it to take effect. It doesn't really heal for that much. And by the time you even try to get all your health back, you essentially end up getting killed and murdered anyway. So you're better off just using Mickey. Because Mickey not only gives you a few cards back, but he also stuns enemies. So it's kind of a bonus. And I think at this point, I kind of end up like putting darkness points, which will be able to cap it at thir at 20. Because the thir I think capping it at around 30 is fine. I don't really think you'll have enough grinding sessions to get like 50 or whatever. You don't really need that much. You just need like probably like 20 or 30. And then that's really it. That, that, that should be your limit. But anyways, I think it's time for more cutscenes. Uh, no. There is no cutscenes. I usually always forget. It's cutscene here, though. How can we help you, Vexen? It's not very often we see you topside. I came to lend you a hand. You obviously believe this Sora has much potential. But I remain unconvinced he is truly worth such coddling. I think an experiment would show if he really is of any value to us <laughs> well here we go again it's just an excuse so you can carry out your little experiments that's all I'm a scientist experiments are what I do yes whatever you can do what you want but you know I think testing Sora is just a cover for testing your valet valet He's the product of pure research. What he actually is, is a toy. Hmm. You should just learn to be quiet. Anyway, since you came all this way, you're gonna need this. A humble gift to my elder. I hope you use it to put on a very good show for us. That card holds the memories of Sora and Riku's home. It's just a card. What good is that? With a little help from Namine, you'll have all the real Riku's memories. Maybe we can get her to make you forget you're nothing but a fake. In other words, we'll remake your heart so you can be exactly the same as the real Riku, okay? Uh, you want to remake my heart? The real Riku is a wimp who's afraid of the dark. What do I want with the heart of a loser? Any objections, Vexen? After all, you do want to test Sora, don't you? It must be done. How can you? Are you betraying me? I told you I would make good use of you, didn't I? No. Relax, kiddo. I don't think it's gonna hurt that much. 
I'll hurt you! <laughs> Stupid little toy. Think you could defeat me? Where would you ever get a thought like that? But look on the bright side. Along with everything else in your head, Naminé will erase the memory of me knocking you flat. Instead, she will implant the loveliest little memories you could ever hope for. It's no big deal that they're all lies. No. No! Well, I don't know what to say. Or what to think of that scene. All I know is that uh, Rip Repliku, and that's kind of the reason as to why he is what he is in um, Sora's story. But anyways, now it's time for us to head to Wonderland. And I don't cut any battles, mainly because I go straight for the Trick Master. You want to know why? This area, this world is by far, I think, one of Riku's worst deck in the game. Or worst deck in the worlds. Mainly because you got ones, you got twos, you got the occasional five. You might got a seven in there. And all that other nonsense. And uh, no offense, the Heartless here for some reason have better cards than you do. So what you want to do, you want to go straight for the Trick Master. And the strategy for the Trick Master is relatively easy and not overly complicated in the slightest. All you have to do is don't spam your cards all willy-nilly. Because if you do spam your cards willy-nilly, what's going to end up happening is you're not going to win. Because you're going to waste all your cards. Mickey ain't going to save you. Pluto is probably not going to save you either. And you're going to have, like, the lack of fighting. And you don't want that. Because the Trick Master, he does have the same exact stun like the Parasite Cage. But the problem is, is that you kind of have to hit him at the near top of his model to actually stun him. You don't really have to worry about stunning him. Thank God for that. It's just that it's something to think about if you are going to be using the table to your advantage and trying to actually combo the Trick Master. You don't really need to do that. You can... Um, hit him from the bottom. You also don't want to go into dark mode because the thing is is that with Riku the way how he attacks is him spinning and That attack animation is not gonna really hit the trick master all that much So you actually do not want to go into dark mode mind you it doesn't really matter anyways because Getting into dark mode in this fight is is almost impossible unless you're really trying or, you know, you're using slates to go ahead and get into dark mode. Like I said, don't recommend it, because you will end up losing all your cards if you manage to do that. You really, really don't want to do that. Anyways. Um, okay. I stupidly do this three times. Where, I, well, two times, I should say. And I end up going back, and it's like, God damn it, I, I, I keep doing that. It's like, I'm just trying to play the card, not go back. That's not what I'm trying to do. And anyways, let's, let's finish off this guy. So, Trick Master, he has the same exact move, same exact tech. The only difference is, is that his cards are a little bit higher. So, you just notice that I have five ones, five fours, threes, five twos, and ones. That's essentially all my cards. Those are the cards that I have to use. Also, you don't have that much cards. So if the Trick Master ever uses like eights or sevens, do not attack him. Just let him do his attack animation, recharge as you need to, and then just use overdrive to go ahead and dish out a lot of damage towards him. Because if you do anything else, you're not winning this fight. That's the entire strategy of this entire fight. And it's relatively easy because in all fairness, you actually shouldn't get hit. I say that that I, I actually do think I take damage, do I? No, I actually don't think I actually take damage. Huh. But yeah, you notice that I keep getting all my cards back? Like, I keep getting all nine of my cards back? That's really because those are like the last cards I even have. I can't do anything about that. You also don't want to duel him either. And that's really it. Since this is not KH1, his batons cannot hurt you. 
And since this is um, this is Riku's side, I mean, you can also do the same thing in Sora's story as well, where if you kind of set up a deck that allows you to um, break him and combo him at the same time, you can relatively win. The issue is, however, is that with unlike with Riku and Sora, Sora, you can create a deck to be able to defeat the Trick Master easily. Riku, you have to deal with his deck, and you have to deal with the um the 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 very um what is it the nerf card system for him so on one end bosses are a little bit easier to handle because you're you're more so you're more so not focused on sliding them a lot unless you're fighting the main bosses which sliding them is actually a good idea once you hit dark mode and using attack bracer and I end up showing what the card system is and the enemy card that you have, which is large body. I think large body is pretty good, but I don't really know how great it would be. I'm not sure if I end up mentioning what Bottomless Darkness actually does in Riku's story, or I mean in Sora's story. Bottomless Darkness gives you nothing but shadows. That Those are the only type of enemies. On one end, it's great to fight to be able to easily beat. On another end, it's not recommended because they don't really give you that much experience because dark because you're fighting shadows. Shadows never give you that much experience to begin with. But as always, there's no cutscene until we go up the second stairs, so enjoy. Why so glum, Namine? Is there something that's been troubling you? Are you feeling awful about tinkering with Sora's memory? Or maybe you... Cut it out, Larkseen. Namine? She doesn't want to remember Sora. Is that so? Don't worry. Whatever's hurting you, I'll make it go away. I swear it on this, the good luck charm you gave me. See ya. That's just amazing. It's almost like you completely made his heart from scratch. Nice touch with the good luck charm. I didn't know you could use memories to transform objects like cards into keepsakes. You used the same trick on Sora, right? You changed Kairi's good luck charm with your magic, didn't you? <laughs> it won't be long before Sora forgets about Kairi completely. And then he'll be all yours to- He won't forget. Huh? No matter how much I change his memory, Sora will never forget Kairi. Memories of me. More false memories of me will just make his feelings for Kyrie even stronger than before. Because I'm the shadow of Kyrie. What's your problem with that? That should be your incentive not to screw anything up. Just do a good job rewriting Sora's heart. Then you can actually be somebody and no longer just Kyrie's shadow. You'll be real in Sora's heart. I mean, if that's the entire purpose of why <clears throat> Namine is doing what she's doing, kind of ends up making her feel like a very selfish vi villain. Mind you, she does end up changing in the end, but whatever. Anyways, that's the end of this episode of Reverse of Rebirth. I've been Kopika, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next electrifying episode. See yous!